There was a word coined many years ago by a great pastor, Colonel Arby Thiem Jr. That word was rebound. Rebound. And it's something very simple for us to understand once we get the basics behind it. Rebound actually deals specifically with 1 John 1 9. If we name our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to purify us from all wrongdoing. And you have the privacy of your own priesthood as a believer in Jesus Christ to name your sins to God, to him, and to him only. You don't have to name it to your neighbor, just to God. Then you're forgiven. And that's rebound. And that's what you always should do before a Bible class. Now this is a short Bible class in that it is for video and just for the uh, to be put on the internet uh, to spark interest in a ministry that teaches the Word of God the two-edged sword. It cuts both ways. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes we see ourselves. I see myself in the mirror all the time and a lot of times I don't like what I see and I'm not talking physically. I'm talking about our souls, how we think and you are what you think. So right now you have a chance to rebound, which means name those sins to God you've committed. You may only remember one of them. Name it. All the rest are forgiven because he's faithful and just to do so. So I imagine you've done that already in your head, so we'll move on to another R. Reaction. Reaction. Believers, there is no reason you as church age believers in this dispensation of the dispensations to ever react. In fact, we are to have the thinking of Christ and Christ went through some of the, actually, the worst injustices ever. We can't even imagine it's beyond our capability to even think of how wronged our Lord was in terms of the fact people wronged him. And we could go to the part where they ripped out his beard or spit in his face, a disgusting thing. Or where they whipped him for no reason. He was perfect. He did nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Now you've never lived until you've gone through life and you've done nothing wrong and all of a sudden you receive scourge for something you never did. I mean, we probably all remember when we were younger, if we had a pretty even, even a stable household, we remember that our parents aren't always perfect and they may spank us when we really didn't do it. They think we did. They think we lied. They think we did something when someone else actually did it, and so we're wronged. It's one of the hardest, most difficult things for anyone to get over, and even for believers, but for believers it should be the easiest. Our Lord never reacted as they ripped the hair right out of his chinny chin chin. That's painful. I can tell you right now it's painful. The other day I had some blood drawn from a nurse checking cholesterol level for some odd reason and she put on this I knew it wasn't the same tape she put on the last time. This stuff was sticky and I have a little bit of arm hair right here where that vein is so she pulled the blood out. I watched it. I like to watch that. I'm strange like that. It wasn't that painful. The most painful part was when I came home and I had to grab that thing and rip it. And I mean, I had to do it fast. I tried it slow at first and I said, oh no. 
The hair was stuck. So I ripped it. And then I uh, winced. And I may even said, eh, ah, or something. And then it left these little red marks where the hair had been ripped out. It painful. And that's nothing compared to what our Lord went through. I mean, the beard and this, what I have here, this is not a beard. This is a, a goatee that uh, everyone has an opinion about. Some people like it. Some people don't. I don't care. I like it. I wear it. It's my business. But... Even this, I mean, I get a rip, that would hurt. But our Lord's beard was slightly longer, and it just jerked chunks and chunks of hair, and the blood, and the, the pain of it. And then not only that, but then to have some dirty, ugly person come up to you and spit right on your face to where that spit mixes with the blood that is running down your own face. Well, most of us would react. I would react. But we're not Jesus Christ. But guess what? We're to have the thinking of Jesus Christ. So that should bring us to the point of understanding reaction for us as church age believers. It's not good. You reacting to someone because they've done you wrong is not good. I lived in the South. And in the South, and I guarantee you, it's true. I lived in South Carolina. South Carolina has always been known as a hothead state. People get hot-headed. And uh, that's why we had a civil war. South Carolina got hot-headed. They withdrew from the Union before anything could be settled, and guess what? Slavery would have disappeared because of the Industrial Revolution. But instead, we had a hot-headed state called South Carolina say, I'm getting out of the Union. They were wrong. They reacted. And because of their reaction, we had the bloodiest war in all of our history. Reaction's not good. You trying to be tough and react to someone who has done you wrong is not good, believers. Does that mean you should be run over? Does that mean that you should allow people to do whatever they wish with you? Well, not necessarily. You have to grow in some discernment of doctrine. But one thing I can tell you is you can never have feelings of bitterness, anger, hatred, you can follow the law. You can follow certain policies put in place for people who have a tendency to go overboard in their power lust. You can do those things. But you cannot react in bitterness. Because reaction to life, I mean life itself has problems all the time. I mean Job described it this way. Life is like the sparks of a fire flying upward at night. They're always there, always problems. And reaction to life is a sign of failure. Do you react to people? It doesn't have to be people. Do you react to your bank statement? <laughs> Do you react to money? Do you react to anything? Your dog? Your cat? I've known people dumb enough to react to a dumb cat. Honestly. There are people like that. Hard for me to understand, but you've probably known them. I, I don't live like most people, and my thinking is a bit different than what most people's thinking seems to be, but I can, and I'm not trying to say I'm above everyone else. I'm just trying to say there, there are people with some weird ideas who react to some weird things. So the easiest thing to do in life is to become weak. How do you become a weak believer? Reaction. Reaction. Now, any pastor who is worth his salt, he does not uh, react. That is to all the criticism he receives, and he receives an abundance of it. 
And uh, <laughs> the funny thing is, people try to get me to react. They say, huh, no one listens to you, you little punk, you blockity, you blankety, whatever they say. Uh, and they're trying to get me to react. Well, if, first of all, if no one listens to me, why to try, why, what, what's the point of trying to get me to react? And uh, secondly, if no one listens to me, why do you care? What, what is wrong with you? Why do you want me to react to you? Obviously, obviously, you listened to something you didn't like, so if you listen to something, then someone else maybe listened to it too. How do you know? It's a, it's a form of insult, a form of reaction. And, this, and some people write to me as if I force them to watch this. Look, this is on my own page. I don't share it. I, might, I share it with my father and my mother. If they share it with people, well, that's up to them. That's their volition. But I have decided I, I'll share it with no one except uh, my parents, and I'll put it on my own page. And then uh, people have reacted to me and said, and then I have to watch you pretend to be Colonel Thingy and you are nothing but a loser. You might be able to spout what Colonel Thing spouted, but you're a loser, and I heard it all. Did I react? No. I thought it was rather funny, actually. Actually, it was almost an encouragement because I realized, hey, this person thought they had to listen to me and listened. And then they got their toes stepped on and reacted. But they listened. They may be listening right now even. It's funny. It's funny how people are. And that's why you can't get into reaction. There's something far greater in this life than having your eyes on people. And that's one of the biggest problems in Christianity. Christians getting their eyes on people getting their eyes on what people think of them, on how they are perceived. I don't care. And sometimes you receive persecution because you don't care. But honestly, I don't care. Because we are to have the thinking of Christ. He didn't care. He had a personal sense of destiny. And once you grow spiritually, you too will develop a personal sense of destiny, and then you won't care. But before we go too far into depth with regards to the spiritual life and how to handle it, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about reaction. Because it requires very little for you to lose your spiritual life. And when it comes to reaction, you've lost it. If you react to some personality that you don't like because you think their personality is unpleasant, or you don't like the way they communicate, or you can't imagine that someone would talk a certain way, and you have your own idea of how a pastor should be and a pastor should not be, and it's all part of your human ideas and human tradition passed down by humans, not by God. So all of us as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, and definitely all of you who are growing in grace, you're going to be tested. Are you going to win this test? Now the whole process of God testing your wherewithal to leave things in His hands is when someone wrongs you. And that means they could wrong you because you deserve it, or they could wrong you just out of some allegation. Either way, it's a test because no believer has a right to wrong you. No believer has a right to put their finger on you, which means they don't have a right to open their mouth against you. I don't care what type of person you are. I don't care if you're a believer right now, stumbling down my street outside, 
tore up drunk and about to fall in a wet ditch. Well, that's, that's none of, uh, the only business of, of it would be of me is if I were to walk outside and see the person in my ditch, I would call 911 to help them out, not to react to them and say, you drunk. You see, Christians can be very, very cruel. So you'll be tested if you're growing in grace and knowledge, obviously. And the one thing you do when you react, you cut off all the Word of God from your thinking. Bible doctrine, gone. When you react to someone, when someone makes you mad, are you thinking about God? No. No, you're usually raising your voice and screaming. And I've thought about this. Raising the voice and screaming. And uh, there, is a way, there are ways of communication that uh, do provide uh, more of an emphasis, especially if you raise your voice. And there are some people in reaction who think that just screaming at the top of their lungs whether they make sense or not doesn't matter. Just screaming at the top of their lungs means they're right and you're wrong. And this is where many marriages are in America. Just scream. Scream whatever. You, you could scream in German. It wouldn't matter. You're right. Ich bin ein Berliner. Well, that's true. That means I'm a jelly donut. But you see, you scream it at somebody, it seems like it has some emphasis. Reaction. Reaction's all emotion. No thought. No thought to it whatsoever. Now, you're going to be tempted to cut off the Word of God by reaction. Because you've been wronged. Now, what's your problem? Where are your eyes? Well, if I were to ask Luke that, he would point at his eyeball. Here's my eye. Here's my eye. This one is black for some reason. Don't know why, but here's my eye. Here's my other eye. He knows where his eyes are, but that's not what I mean. Where are you focused? Do you have your eyes on man? Now, if you're one to react, your eyes are on man. And you can see this in politics. In politics, uh, people make mistakes, just as in real life, of course. And in politics, there's a lot of room for reaction. And you can react and really make a fool out of yourself because someone said something about you that wasn't true and you just, you just go berserk. And you might be a complete and utter genius, completely qualified to be president, completely qualified in your knowledge to handle the problems and the situations that this country faces, but without Bible doctrine. And when you get your eyes on man, you're, you're finished. It's over. You can't function that way. Now, reaction has a special meaning for women because a woman is to either respond to a man or react. That there's no, there's no in-between. That is, a woman who knows a man. If you're friends with a woman, this is true, even as just simple friends, the woman will react to you at times, and the woman will respond to you at times, but since you're just friends, it's not that big a deal, but you get married, it's a real big deal, because you've got to live with that person reacting with you, reacting to you. And men react too. This isn't any type of woman bashing session. I would, I don't, I would never bash the woman. The woman is uh, phenomenal. I'll tell you why. Adam was walking around saying, where is mine? You know, he saw the monkey with the monkey et. What do they call it? What's a female monkey? I don't know. Monkey and girl monkey. And he saw that, and then he saw doe and buck. 
And he saw male and female everywhere. And then he saw himself and said, I'm male, obviously. And then he said, well, where's my female? Then he went to the Garden of Eden Beach and he looked around and there were no bikinis. So here he is wondering, well, where's my female? That's normal. That's how God designed it. God wants that to be the system. He designed the system. You know, some Catholics are weird. They'll say, no, 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 no. Our priest can't marry. Our priest can't date. Our priest can't even talk to a woman. Now, what kind of nonsense is that? And you know, it's kind of carried over into even modern-day Christianity among Protestants. A preacher just can have no interest in a woman. I'm talking about a single preacher, a married preacher, of course. No, they shouldn't. They may. It happens, but they shouldn't. But a single preacher? What's it your business? What's it your business who he courts? It's not. As our Lord said, a, a pastor has a right to have a wife, Peter did, or an apostle. But we're dealing with reaction, and when you react, you are tempted to cut off the word of God when you react. And the reason is you get your eyes on man in spite of Jeremiah's explicit warning. And Jeremiah is an important prophet and, it's an, and he's a very important prophet for us because we find ourselves as a country in the same situation that Jeremiah found himself. We are a country in reaction. And we have freedom and we elect whomever we wish to elect. And then we react to that person. doesn't matter who it is. We always react to that person. Now what that means is we're off spiritually. And if you react to people, wives, if you react to your husband, guess what? Jeremiah has a warning for you. Cursed is you who trust in man. The only reason you react to your husband is because he did something you thought he shouldn't do. Well, you had a trust in him that he would not do something that he did, and so you reacted. You're in the wrong! None of your business what someone else does, even in marriage. There must be privacy in marriage. But I will not make this a marriage subject. I will just tell you this as we begin our study of reaction, and we'll continue in our little bits and pieces. Um, I, I want to call this, I want to call these the, the, the Charles Stanley archives, but even these are better, even though they're 20, I, I can't keep it under 20 minutes, 15, whatever. And I know that might sound derogatory, sorry. It's just true. But this is the case. Cursed is the man who trusts in man. Who do you trust in? Did you watch the debates tonight? I'm going to watch them later. I had to work. I had to deal with my own situations. I had to work with my own hands. And then uh, came home and saw a debate on. Now it's interesting to me. I love politics. I like watching it. I like speculating on what's going to happen next. And nothing wrong with that. It means you have a brain. Nothing wrong with having a brain. But I'll tell you what, I don't react. Whoever wins the election, I am not going to react. I used to, but not anymore. Why? Because I've learned Bible doctrine, and I've learned that cursed is the man who trusts in man. And there's no one perfect. Now, a lot of you are out there looking for a perfect candidate. There is not one. And a lot of you have idolized a candidate uh, one of whom, one candidate of whom I know receives great adulation and 
idolization because a lot of the young people follow him and young people are idealistic would be Ron Paul. But uh, most of those are following Ron Paul because they want to get their pot and not be arrested for it. That's all. Let's be real about it. Should that be a policy? No, it shouldn't be a policy. As soon as you relax standards on that type of drug use, you've ended a generation. You can't think under the influence of marijuana. You can eat, but you can't think. And you definitely can't apply doctrine. You don't even care to. You're just kind of oblivious to the world. What fun is that? Well, for people who are in pain, mentally, it's an escape. It's a sublimation. But you need Bible doctrine. And I'll just leave you with this. As we are going into this political season... And as all of you are going to be reacted to, and as all of you are going to want to react, forget it. If your candidate goes way down in the polls, you better not react. Cursed is he who puts his trust in man and makes flesh his right arm. You see that? You see how I acted like the colonel there? <laughs> Reaction, see. React to me and I'll just uh, push it right back in your face. Look. Cursed is he who puts his trust in man and makes flesh his right arm. So with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, Father, we thank you for the wonderful privilege and opportunity of studying these things. If you'd like to learn more concerning the Word of God, Bible Doctrine, it's very simple. Go to www.aelewisministries.org and you can listen to a lot more than just 20 minutes.